So in this video, we're going to look at integration by parts. We're going to do some general strategizing, sort of pre-strategy pre thinking, with preliminary thinking. Figuring out, the goal is to figure out when you do integration by parts, what do you choose as your part to differentiate and what do you choose as a part to integrate. And we're not yet quite ready for the final rule, which is the islet rule, which I'll talk about later. But we are just going to do some general strategizing about different types of functions, what happens when you differentiate them, what happens when you integrate them, what happens to the complexity. So I'm going to begin with inverse trig and logarithmic functions. Okay, I just circle the beginning letters. These will be these are sort of relevant for the mnemonic. So inverse trig and logarithmic functions. So what's some examples of Inverse trig logarithmic function, well, logarithmic could just be ln x. Right? You could have something like ln x. Right? I'll just write examples here. Inverse trig could be something like arc tan x. Okay, things like that. Now, what happens when you differentiate functions like these? What is the derivative of ln x? Uh, 1 over x. 1 over x. What's the derivative of arc tan x? 1 over 1 plus x squared. 1 over 1 plus x squared. What's common between these derivatives? Well, they're algebraic things, right? So, in general, if you differentiate something which is inverse trig or log, you get algebraic expressions. So, so this is good to differentiate because you get to algebraic expressions. Algebraic could be rational functions, could be radicals. If you have arc sine, you get the square root thing. But they be algebraic. Thing. What about integration? What happens when you integrate? Well, we don't really know how to integrate. So these are terrible to integrate. Okay, so don't think about integrating these functions. But you can think about differentiating them because you get algebraic things. Non-polynomial, generally algebraic. Things. Okay, now what about polynomials? What happens when you differentiate polynomials? Uh, you get polynomials. Of what and how is the new polynomial related to the old one? Uh, degree gray goes down by one. And if you do it sufficiently many times, what happens? Uh, you got a constant now by zero. Repeat. Repeated differentiation gives zero. In fact, polynomials are the only thing for which repeated differentiation gives you. Integration, you do get a polynomial, but of, of degree one more. Okay. So, What happens if you start with something which is trigonometric or exponential? And and I don't want to consider all trigonometric and exponential things here. I want to consider only those which are it's, it's too complicated to write here. But I want to consider things like sine, cosine, exponential, hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine. I don't want to consider things like tan and cotangent. Basically, I want to consider things which are just polynomials in sine. And cosine. So sine, cosine, exponential, hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine, and polynomials in these. I don't want to consider things like tan and cotangent here. I'll consider them later. It'll be a little clearer why. But for now, I'll just take that. Now, what happens when you integrate, or sorry, what happens when you differentiate something like sine or cosine? Hmm? Oh, you get sine or cosine back. Yeah. It'll be like if you differentiate sine, you get cosine. So you differentiate, you get get something similar. Right? If you differentiate sine, you get cosine. If you differentiate cosine, you get negative sine, and so on. Okay. And so it doesn't really change in complexity. And you can and this and you can keep doing this repeatedly. Okay. So it won't go to zero. It'll just sort of remain the same level of complexity, unlike polynomials, which when you differentiate, they actually get simpler. Okay, what about integration? Uh, you get the same thing. 
you get something similar because in integrate sign you get negative cosine when you get exponential you get exponential right it doesn't change in complexity is this captured everything here yeah. so both with polynomials and with these you can repeatedly differentiate repeatedly integrate with the polynomials it does go to zero eventually with these it just sort of stays in the cycle okay now algebraic non-polynomial rational functions so non-polynomial could include rational function it could also include things which have square roots okay so this could include things like 1 over x 1 over x square 1 over x squared plus 1 1 over square root of 1 minus x square and the specific expressions are not important so what happens when you differentiate something like this? What will you get? You get rational functions back. Or, or if you're doing radicals, you'll get things. But you'll, you'll stay within algebra. But will it become simpler? Uh, not necessarily. Yeah, it, usually it, it will. There's no like real sense in which it, it generically becomes. Sometimes it might, but generally it remains about as complex. And it definitely doesn't become zero i mean it doesn't eventually become zero so you may keep differentiating something and keep getting new stuff and the only things which eventually become zero are polynomials so that's why i did these things a little separately looking a little complicated here in so many cases this is sort of just our preliminary work to formulate the rule you can just remember the rule and forget, but this really helps understand what's happening. What about integration? Well, if I ask you what's the integral of 1 over x squared, that's negative 1 over x. So sometimes when you integrate something like this, you get a rational function again. Right? So some of these, when you integrate, you stay within the algebraic domain. But there are others which you integrate and you don't stay within the algebraic domain. For example, 1 over 1 plus x squared. So 1 over x squared plus 1. This integrates to arctan. Mm -hmm. Inverse trig. 1 over x integrates to ln. ln absolute value x in general. But the, the point is these integrate. And 1 over root 1 minus x squared integrates to arc sine. So, so of the four I've written actually, three of them integrate to things in the inverse or log. So the, what's the general idea then? Integration. You may get algebraic. Or you may get inverse, inverse or log. Inverse trick or log. Whereas if you're running with polynomials, you actually were guaranteed you'd always stay within the algebraic algebraic domain. Okay. But now you're not. Depends on the specifics. Also, even if you start with say one over x squared. When you integrate 1 over x squared, you get negative 1 over x, which is still algebraic. But when you integrate it a second time, you get outside the algebraic domain and into log arithmetic. Right? Mm -hmm. So you could have some things which the first time you integrate, you, you stay within algebraic, but the second time you go outside. Or maybe the first five times you integrate, you stay within algebraic, but then the sixth time you move out. So even though some of these do integrate to algebraic, there'll be many of them which eventually you move out of algebraic and into the inverse and log. Okay, what about trigonometric and exponential rational functions? So these include things like what? Things which are rational functions of sine and cosine. So these include things like tan. Tan is just sine over cosine. Right? Or secant, which is 1 over cosine. Or cotangent. Or cosecant. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. Okay, now when you differentiate these, you do still stay within trigonometric and exponential. Oh, there are also corresponding things for exponential, which I won't mention. You may not have seen this, you know, hyperbolic trigonometry. So, but I'm just doing the trigonometric ones. So you stay within the trigonometric and exponential, right? For example, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. What happens when you try to integrate these? The integrals, some of them integrate within trigonometric and exponential. But some of them will involve 
these inverse things. Become complicated, right? So may become composites of log. Are we here? This yes. is getting too much. Right? Like like tan. Let me just write with the blue pen. Tan. What does tan integrate to? Uh, line of secant last time. No, that's the integral secant. But yeah, it's, it's something. So oh, the, it's not ne the cosine. Negative log of cosine. Uh. Okay, so you, you get this composite of natural log and cosine. So you get some sort of mix of a log and a trig. You get a composite, right? Mm -hmm. So 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 these two are these two cases, the algebraic non polymer and the trigonometric exponential dash and functions, they're they're similar, right? If you differentiate, they stay within the domain, within these types of functions, but if you integrate, they may stay or they may stray out of the thing and get you in here. So this is sort of the background work, and in the next video we'll see how this actually gives you the rule precedence rule up here to figure out the order in which you differentiate integrate.